This is this is the direction we don't want sunscreen to go. I can't stop looking at my neck. <laughs> Hi friends, my name is Hunter Brene and I am a country bumpkin residing in the beautiful Seoul, South Korea. I have to admit that I'm one of those people that discovered way too late in life that sunscreen is necessary on a daily basis. Even being the melanated person that I am, I never really wore sunscreen for most of my life up until college years. Now that I live in Korea, I'm aware of the broad variety of sunscreen options that are available. Of course, there are sunscreens more suitable for oily skin or dry skin, combination skin, normal skin, but also there are even more subcategories to sunscreen that I was completely unaware of. Even still, I think the biggest question that most people of color, and particularly black people have when it comes to Korean sunscreen is, will it work on our skin? So let's talk about some of the best Korean sunscreens that are on the market, some of the skin concerns that they address, and most importantly, how well Korean sunscreens work on melanated dark skin. Today is gonna be another skin friendly conversation. So if this is a topic that you're interested in hearing more about on this channel, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, before we even get into the meat of the conversation, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment any questions, concerns, advice, or even just, you know, some kind words that you may have for me. On a fundamental level, the most effective sunscreens have SPF 30 or more and also have broad spectrum protection. The broad spectrum protection is what protects our skin from UVA and UVBs from the sun. While SPF 30 is a suitable level of protection, SPF 50 plus is often preferred for K-beauty brands that offer sunscreens. Which already off the bat, I have to say that's a major win for a lot of Korean brand sunscreens. If you're like me, you may be wondering what is the plus sign or the multiple plus signs that you see after the SPF rating on sunscreens. So I had to do a little research. The plus means additional UVA protection, which these UV rays are the ones most responsible for wrinkling and aging on the skin. Four pluses, plus, 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 is the highest level of protection and also the most preferred while two pluses is ranked as the most moderate level and you shouldn't really go for any sunscreens that have below two plus. What also sets Korean sunscreens apart is the added skincare properties that are alongside the sun protection. These skincare sunscreens are like multitaskers. They're working to protect you from the sun, but then also giving your skin those ingredients, those skin loving properties that are allowing it to heal itself and also give it the moisture that it needs. Some popular skincare sunscreen ingredients to look for include niacinamide, aloe vera, asiatica, hyaluronic acid, tea tree, and so on and so forth. The list really does go on. So when you're purchasing your next Korean sunscreen, maybe think about what skincare concerns that you have and possibly finding some sunscreens that have ingredients in there to help with the problem. One final property of Korean sunscreens that I think really sets them apart is the categorization of chemical sunscreens versus mineral or physical sunscreens. Whereas mineral physical sunscreens provide an instant physical protection and barrier between your skin and the UVA and UVB rays, chemical sunscreens take a bit more time to adhere to the skin, but they do convert UV rays into heat and provide protection to your skin that way. You may notice that mineral or physical sunscreens have a more thick consistency, they give more of a white cast, they are a lot harder to get off of the skin to wash off, whereas chemical sunscreens are light and airy, more watery consistency, but it takes a little bit more time to fill them really sink into the skin. Or you may be someone that's looking for something in the middle, something that offers both the instant physical reaction of physical and mineral sunscreens while also having more of a light, airy consistency of chemical sunscreens. Today I got you covered. I will offer examples of chemical sunscreens as well as physical slash mineral sunscreens and options that are in the middle, hybrid options that are considered physical and chemical at the same time. 
Starting with mineral sunscreens, my absolute favorite option is this one from Cosrx. This is the Aloe Soothing Sun Cream SPF 50 plus with a PA rating of three plus signs. When you think about stereotypical mineral sunscreens, you're thinking that harsh layer of white paste on your skin when you're going to the beach where your face looks completely different from the complexion of your body. But the new age of physical sunscreens also come in really lightweight, airy, transparent consistencies that aren't like what the sunscreens used to be back in the day. So for example, the Cosrx sunscreen, it's very milky, very light. There is some of a cast on it, but as you rub it in more and more and more, you see that cast start to disappear. You still have the purple tint because it is a mineral slash physical sunscreen, but once you rub it in, you can hardly tell that you're wearing a sunscreen. It's really nice and airy, it sits really well under makeup. You don't have to worry about feeling the sunscreen all day long. It sinks into the skin very nicely, leaves a very soft complexion. Yeah. One downside to this sunscreen is it is fragrance. So if you have sensitive skin, this might not be a good option for you. But I do love the lightweight texture. I love that it does not leave a white cast. Even see, it's all blended in and there's no purple tint. There's nothing showing that I even put sunscreen on at all. It just blends in like a normal moisturizer. I do have my list here of honorable mentions for the mineral sunscreen category. This includes the Etude House Sun Prize Sun Milk SPF 50 and this has a PA rating of 4+. This sunscreen is fragrance free, but reviews claim that there is an overpowering lemony scent. Not sure where that's coming from. I haven't personally tried this one, but keep a lookout for that if you have sensitive skin. The Etude House sunscreen is great for oily, acne prone skin and it leaves no white cast. Next is the Sun By Me Calming Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus. This has a PA rating of 4 plus. This does have a fragrance because of the tea tree oil that is in the formula, but it is good for acne prone skin and it is marketed towards healing masking. So if this is something that you've dealt with, it's great for inflammation and very moisturizing. So it's good for sensitive, dry and oily skin. This sunscreen also offers skin brightening properties as well as anti-aging properties. So that's a lot packed into one product. If you're able to see past the tea tree oil that is in it, I think that this is a great option. I think it's really an all-in-one. The final honorable mention for the mineral category is the Dr. Jart Every Sunday Sunscreen SPF 50. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find the specific PA rating for the sunscreen, but it does explicitly state that it offers UVA and UVB protection. Unfortunately, we won't know how much protection it offers, but if you are interested, maybe you would be able to find more information on that from the actual component. The Dr. Jart sunscreen is not fragrance free. It has fragrance, so sensitive skin beware, but it is lightweight. It is a matte formula that is new. I haven't heard of that before. And it is good for normal, dry combination and oily skin. So literally every skin type, this mineral sunscreen is suitable for. Our next category of sunscreens are chemical sunscreens. So if you remember, these are sunscreens that take a bit more time to absorb into the skin. Dermatologists recommend 15 to 24 minutes of a wait time before exposure to the sun. These formulas are great under makeup, but they also work on the skin alone. And if you are using them alongside other skincare products, it's best to apply them as the final step of your skincare routine. My absolute favorite chemical sunscreen is this one. This is the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. This is my current sunscreen that I wear under my makeup, but it is also great on its own. Like I mentioned, the consistency for a chemical sunscreen is a bit more lightweight, a bit more transparent, but it does take a little bit more time to really sink in there because it is so light. That literally took half of the blending time that it took for the mineral sunscreen. That's not to knock mineral sunscreens, just that they have a thicker consistency. They take a little bit more time to blend in. Of course, there is a no white cast, no indication that I even have sunscreen on my hand. Very soft, very gentle, feels great, feels light. It's like, again, nothing is there. 
The Isentry Watery Sun Gel is an SPF 50 with a PA rating of 4 plus, so optimal rating. It is fragrance free. It is also lightweight, has no white cast, and it's best for dry skin. But because of the lightweight consistency, it's also suitable for oily and combination skin. This sunscreen has hyaluronic acid infused into the formula, but I also found out through my research that it also has niacinamide inside. These are two serums that I use on a daily basis in my normal skincare routine, so it's nice to have that double backing of that in my sun cream. Now onto the honorable mentions of the chemical sunscreens, the first being the Beauty of Joseon Sunscreen SPF 50. This does have a PA rating of 4+. This formula is fragrance free, it is lightweight, it is organic, which again, first time for me finding out some of these properties. This formula is good for dry and oily skin, but it may irritate acne prone skin. Just a heads up for folks who may be suffering with acne. The next recommendation is the Super Goop Glow Screen SPF 30 PA 3+. This sunscreen has the lowest SPF rating of the ones that I recommend, but still suitable, still a moderate amount of protection from the sun. Also with the PA rating of 3+, there's that added UVA, UVB protection. This Super Goop formula is probably the most popular of all of these sunscreens, maybe on a more global range because Super Goop is carried in Sephora and other online retailers that are really popular. With it having the lowest SPF rating and also only a PA of 3+, it's not my go-to. I've never reached for this one, but with it being so popular and it having this glowing property inside of it it is recommended and I think it would be a good option for anyone that may be looking for a sunscreen that you can just wear out into the world on its own. My next recommendation which was my tried and true before I converted is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios, Anthelios UV Mune 400 SPF 50. So this is another sunscreen that I wasn't able to find the specific PA rating, but it did explicitly say that it offers UVA and UVB protections. This sunscreen has high protection and it has water and sweat resistance. That's the part that got me when I was using it. This formula is also lightweight. It has anti-eye stinging and it is good for dry, oily, and sensitive skin. The last category that I wanted to talk about are hybrid sunscreens. These being those that have properties from chemical sunscreens and physical sunscreens put together in this multitasking thing <laughs> that work in a very quick manner, but then also sit on the skin very nicely. Unfortunately, this first sunscreen that I'm gonna mention, I am still waiting for it to get here in the mail. It's something that I ordered to try out for this video, but it didn't make it in time. But that is the, I believe it's pronounced Prim? Pirim? Pirim? Prim? UV Defense Me. This sunscreen is SPF 50 and it has a PA rating of 4+. This sunscreen is fragrance free, which is great for sensitive skin, acne prone skin, but it does leave a white cast, which for some may be a bit of a turn off, especially if you're not layering any sort of makeup or concealer on top of your sunscreen. But that is a bit of that mineral, physical property coming through with the sunscreen. Lastly, this sunscreen is good for all skin types. The next sunscreen that I would like to recommend is the Thank You Farmer Sun Protect Relief Sun Cream 50 Plus with a PA rating of 4 plus. This sunscreen has fragrance and it also has a lightweight formula, no white cast, and it is good for oily skin, dry skin, and sensitive skin. My final sunscreen recommendation is the Miss Shaw Soft Finish Sun Milk SPF 50 with a PA rating of 3 plus. Unfortunately, this formula also has fragrance, so beware, beware. It is lightweight, has a lightweight formula, and it is good for oily skin and sensitive skin. It has no white cast and it calms inflamed skin. Since moving to South Korea and creating content on YouTube, yes, my channel is a positive leaning space. It's where I talk about the great aspects of my life here in Korea. It's where I bring products to you that are making my life easier and my life better in hopes that it can also transform your life in a similar way. But still, I want to make sure that I acknowledge that, in fact, this is great progress. But at the same time, there is much work to still be done in other aspects of the beauty realm. Sunscreen is but one piece of a bigger picture where diverse products, diverse packaging, diverse ways of thinking need to be brought into the lifestyle and the mindset of 
Korean beauty. This intimate community that we are creating here is something that's very special to me. Even still, I want to make sure that I'm transparent and honest about my feelings. So seriously, <laughs> seriously in closing, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope that you found my recommendations helpful. Please let me know down in the comments if you have more recommendations to share. I'm always interested in hearing about different products that folks find enjoyable that maybe I should give a try. No matter what time it is, wherever you are, I hope that you have an amazing day, evening, morning, and I'll catch you next time.